Moss is an out-of-the-box thinker, a former history professor, BBC commentator, and world authority on dreams. He studies musicians, military generals, movie stars, CEOs, crooks, and committed coffee drinkers <laughs> to determine how they tap their active dreams, fertile imaginations, and pay close attention to coincidences to get to where they got. Moss's latest book is called The Three Only Things, Tapping the Power of Dreams, Coincidence, and Imagination. And it is my pleasure to welcome Robert Moss to Studio 4 to tell us more. It's grand to be dreaming and imagining with you, Fanny. Isn't it? Yes. And it's a coincidence that we were talking about Dream Vancouver and you showed up. It's a fabulous thing. We can dream a city. We can dream a, bigger, a better city. We can mm -hmm. dream a better community. We can grow a vision and spread its energy around people as long as we do what you said. We come up with the practical action plans to bring mm -hmm. it through and don't just leave it floating out there. How do you define dream? What do you mean, dream? Well, dreaming for me, this might sound paradoxical, dreaming for me is waking up. Mm. You know, we often in our culture think dreaming is about what happens in our sleep. But as we heard from your previous fabulous conversation, dreaming might be about visioning, imagining, and doing things wide awake that come from the depth of us. So a dream experience for me, whether it's a night dream, whether it's a coincidence that is in your face giving you a message with a tingle from the world, mm -hmm. or whether it's the act of growing a vision and putting some energy into imagining something better, it's about waking up to deeper possibilities. So the dreams that interest me are experiences of waking up to something beyond our ordinary limitations. When did you decide dreams were this interesting? What were you doing? Well, I'm a boy from the bush, as you know. I'm an Aussie. I grew up in Australia. And as a kid, I had three experiences that today would be called near-death experiences. We didn't have that term when I was a kid. The doctor said, oh, poor kid. He died and he came back, didn't he? Be, be, be nice to him for mm -hmm. a while. Three times you three, did yeah, that? Yeah, three times. Ages three, uh, nine, and eleven. Doing uh, what? Well, doing what? I checked out of here. One of these experiences, I seem to spend a whole lifetime somewhere else. And you know, the adult world around me in, in conservative Australian society in the 50s didn't know what to make of this. The first person who could say anything worthwhile about it to me was an Aboriginal kid. He said, oh yeah, you got sick, you went somewhere else. Maybe with the spirits, we do that. We get sick, we go somewhere else. When we come back, here we are. So anyway, what I've known from my childhood is that the world's beyond the obvious one. Mm -hmm. And it can be very interesting to get in contact with those worlds. And in those worlds, we can sometimes find healing, guidance, and a vision for life. So why do you think so many have become strangers to magic? Well, bad in habits. A sense. Bad habits. You know, clutter, bad habits, pressure. You know, we go to bed, mm -hmm. we get up with the alarm clock, we've got to get the kids on the bus, get on the bike or the pedicab or the taxi or whatever to work, <laughs> and we leave our night dreams behind. That's one thing. And then we get so scheduled, so pressured, so committed to agendas, including other people's agendas for us, we don't make room in the day for a little bit of loose, flowy thinking or experience of life. One thing I say to people is, Hey, schedule five or ten minutes of unscheduled time during your lunch break, any time you can. Go in the street, go in the woods, wherever you're comfortable, mm -hmm. and see what the world is saying to you. Just slow down, listen to the, and observe the signs of the universe all around you, and see if the world is speaking to you in a way beyond the obvious. That's one of the ways of restoring everyday magic. And this morning when you woke up in your hotel, how did you use that? How did you use that? Well, let me tell you what happened when I stepped out of my hotel. Actually, I, I, I mentioned this to you earlier. I'm stepping out of my hotel and the doorman runs up and he says, I love your pink tie. Uh, men should wear pink, he says. Girls like it. And so, so my, my bumper sticker for the start of my day was in the pink. I had the feeling mm -hmm. at that moment things would go well today. I come to your studio and I've got these wonderful women talking about Dream Vancouver, imagine mm -hmm. Vancouver, building a dream city. So my immediate guidance this morning came from a little coincidence in the world, the doorman literally running after me to say, men should wear pink. <laughs> <laughs> Think pink. Think pink. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when you miss a plane. Oh, yes. When your schedule gets all fluffed up yes. and you're behind and you've missed your plane yes. and you've, they've lost your luggage. Yes. How do you take advantage of that well, in your world? Whenever my plans get screwed up, whether it's missing a plane connection or being delayed or some other you know, moment when your plans get scrambled, all my antennas start twitching, Fanny, because when our plans get screwed up, sometimes an opportunity is coming through. It's one of those tricksterish moments in life mm -hmm. when you might have a chance encounter or something might happen that wouldn't otherwise have happened, which might be very, very interesting indeed. One of my rules of coincidence, there are no rules and yet there are some practical guidelines we can use. One of my practical guidelines for working with coincidence is this. For every setback, there is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. or putting it a different way. Every time a door slams in your face, look for the door that is opening. Every time you miss your plane connection, pay attention to the chance encounter or the event now manifesting that wouldn't have happened otherwise. I live that way. 